Hey, how's it going? This is Nate English from EnglishEndurance.com and I'm here uh, in front of the San Bruno Mountain because uh, there's a hill climb here every January 1st and Ray's doing it. So today we're gonna do a pre-ride of the mountain and talk about you know, how to ride this mountain and you know, get ready for a time trial uh, of any sort. So uh, we're gonna do that and then we'll talk about it after. So as with any race, you want to make sure that you have, you know, the right gear uh, already planned out that you're going to take to the race. You know, in the summertime, maybe take some sunscreen. In the winter, you definitely want, you know, warm clothes. On Monday, when you come out here to race, what do you plan on bringing? And how early do you plan on getting here to get warmed up and get ready to go? Mm -hmm. So on race day, I'll probably get here an hour and a half before the race starts. I'll bring basically food for before and after the ride, that includes drink mix. Um, I'll bring warm clothes as well, and I'll bring my trainer. So those are the three things that I would probably bring. So I think definitely for a race like this where it's going to start like first thing in the morning and it's probably going to be pretty cool, I would much rather warm up on the trainer. You have a lot more control over your effort. You don't have to worry about traffic. You don't have to worry about loading up with as much clothes as you need. Uh, to ride on the road. And definitely remember to leave yourself enough time after you've warmed up to dump whatever clothes you're gonna dump at your car and maybe put your trainer away. Um, I would go ahead and delay that, you know, as much as possible so that you're still pretty warmed up when you go to the start line. This venue is pretty nice. Like we're actually in the parking lot where um, you'll normally pick up your numbers and then the start is just right there. So it, ideally probably warming up with a trainer is good for a lot of people uh, but also just like right that way there's like a little mile mile and a half loop that you can warm up on having that routine as as routine and, and predictable as possible and not having to think about it on race day is really helpful and the more you can prevent having any kind of unnecessary stress because you're wondering where you put something or whether or not you have something or where you need to go. Um, it's really good to be familiar with like what stuff you need and also if you can be familiar with the venue so you know where you need to be and when. So for food, um, I would definitely remember to bring at least a couple of bottles. I would personally bring probably like a bottle of drink mix and a bottle of water and then a bottle of recovery mix for after. And usually I would warm up starting with water and then maybe as I get more warmed up, I would transition to drink mix so that when I get to the start, I'm like pretty ready to go. I might, if I feel like it, have a bar. I would have one available, but I think probably for a hill climb, it's just, you know, 15 or 20 minutes long or maybe 25 at the longest. Uh, personally, I wouldn't want to like add solid food to my stomach in the last half hour before racing. Uh, for the most part, I would stick with liquids because you want to, you know, feel pretty empty in your stomach. Ray and I are gonna, you know, get going and warm up. We're gonna warm up on the road because it's in the middle of the day and it's pretty nice out. Um, but then we'll pre-ride it and show you that and then talk briefly about it afterwards and some of our thoughts on the course. So we just finished pre-riding uh, San Bruno Mountain um, to get ready for the hill climb this, this New Year's Day. And you did it last year, right? Was yeah. there everything you remembered it being? A little bit, yeah. I mean, definitely less intense right now pre-riding it, um, but it brought back a lot of memories, uh, especially <laughs> towards the end. What do you think about uh, the pacing that you anticipate doing um, cause like now you have power and last year you didn't. Mm -hmm. So what was it like last year? Like you said that there were some guys that started off pretty hard and it kind of spread out a little bit. Yeah. Without power last year, I think I'm relied a lot more on other people. Um, so I kind of treated it more like a group race and I, uh, tried to just at least read who was going to go pretty hard, uh, and hold it and who was just kind of showing off. Uh, and it was pretty difficult because the people that I thought were really strong turned out to kind of fall off mid-race and it led me to exert myself a little bit more than I wanted to towards the beginning which then left me pretty weak at the end. 
So this year with power, I think that's going to be a little bit different. Yeah, I think that it's really easy on this course to go a little bit too hard early on, especially because the, the first like highway climb. So basically if you break it into two halves, like you go up the big highway climb and then you loop into the park and then you go up to the, um, to the radio towers at the top. And so there's like a brief respite in the middle where you go into the park and it's actually flat and downhill for a split second. But the first part you can see really far up the road. And I think that it's deceiving because even though it's relatively steep in a few spots, it doesn't feel like you're going that fast and it feels like you should be going faster. And because you're fresher that first you know five minutes, a lot of times people I think go a little bit hard. So if anything, like it's good to stay with the group because you do have some shallow portions and it's even flat for a minute. But like, so as much as possible, stay with a group so you can get a bit of a draft, especially if it's windy. But it's really good to kind of keep it within your limit so you're not blowing yourself up in the first you know five minutes of the race um, because then you'll feel it the rest of the way. If you do go a little bit hard, I think there was a few spots where it's a little bit flatter and you can try to rest and get a bit of a break before you kind of collect your, your effort for the second half. Once you get into the park, and you go underneath the, um, the road that you came in on and then you start going up out after the parking lot area, then it's pretty much just steady all the way up. You've only had a power meter for a couple months now, or like not even two months, and but you just did a, a good quality like 30 minute effort the other day. So you have a pretty good idea what kind of power you're trying to do for for the um, hill climb. Mm -hmm. Do you have an idea like how that is gonna factor into like how you're going how hard you're going in any given moment during the race. Uh, yes. Like, what are your thoughts about like how you're going to pace it? So definitely I know how much power I can sustain for about the time that the race is going to be, but I also know how much more I can give and not just crack. Um, so basically knowing how to pace the first part and knowing on the steady, flatter rolling parts uh, that I can recover if I stay on a draft instead of attacking and trying to gain some time there. Um, with power, I do feel like I'll keep it a little bit more steady, especially just right after here. Uh, I'll get a good gauge of how I'm feeling and probably how much more I can give towards the end. Uh, hopefully, I'll feel pretty yeah. strong by the time I come around yeah. here and I'll know exactly how much power I could sustain for the last remainder of the race. I would definitely you know, be very aware of how much power you can do uh, or if you have heart rate, like think about after several minutes, once you kind of settled into your pace, what kind of heart rate you expect to see kind of hovering for you know the last 10 or 15 minutes of the race um, any hill climb or any time trial effort you want to give yourself several minutes to let your heart rate kind of drift upwards and early in the race if you have both power and heart rate you can use power to make sure that you're not going too hard and you want to make sure that you don't see like peak heart rate numbers just three or four minutes in and then again if you do go a little bit hard like it is flat going into the um into the park like halfway up approximately so there and just on the course in general i would pay attention to how windy it is and where the wind is coming from and see if you can use that to your advantage at any point because ideally if you can prevent yourself from being stuck out alone in the wind where there's a headwind or like a head crosswind and you just have a, one or two other guys to ride with uh, that can really help save you a lot of energy and you know keep you on task because you're trying to hold a wheel but also prevent you from having to do all the work on your own. Once you get into the park and you go you pass the two parking lots and it kicks up for a second from there to the finish it kind of doesn't matter that much anymore unless it's really strong winds that day because it's so steadily uphill that you're not going that fast and the wind doesn't matter as much for getting a draft and you can kind of do your own pace but as much as possible, I would try to stay with a few other riders until that last, you know, third of the race or the last uh, little bit after after the parking lots. What do you think you're going to have on your bike when you're riding? Probably take your, your saddlebag off, I'm guessing. Yeah, I don't think I'll bring a saddlebag at all. <laughs> um, I'll probably have one water bottle uh, and it won't be full, most likely. Yeah, because it's only like 20 minutes. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I won't need a, wa a full water bottle. For a short race like this, I would probably start with a half bottle of mix. Some people would prefer water, some people might take a gel, but you definitely don't need two full bottles. You don't need your saddlebag for you know a 15 to 20 minute hill climb effort. Just keep that in mind ahead of time and, and save yourself a, a few ounces by not carrying too much stuff. Once you come through the, the park and once you actually go onto the steady part that's basically just steadily uphill, uh, 
it's gonna suck around then and i remember last year it didn't really get easy um the whole time it basically felt like i was at my max by that part you know you just give it all you have i mean i think it's really good if you can try to stay in control of your effort like go hard but just below what you feel your limit is for the first half so that you're totally in control and if you need to go harder you can but you're not going to blow yourself up at all in the first half and then once you get like you were saying like in the last portion of the race and like you can almost see the radio towers and see the finish line it gets a little bit steeper for a few minutes there there i mean you pretty much just get to your limit and try to hold it there for the last few minutes ideally you feel like you have a little bit in reserve early and then your reserves just shrinks because like if you keep a steady effort and you pace it well you'll feel like you're getting closer and closer to your limit and ideally you pace it so it's you know pretty steady and you just barely run out of gas at the finish line because if you have a lot left at the end then you know you didn't go too hard if you blow yourself up early since it is steep near the end you're going to give up a lot of time if you you know if you're suffering five minutes out from the finish um, but if you can just keep it steady and keep pouring it on the last few minutes and just barely run out of gas at the end that would be perfect and that's pretty much the case for any time trial or any hill climb like if you can keep it steady and hard and then just run out of gas at the very end that's going to be good so obviously we had the luxury of living nearby the hill climb here so we could come out here and pre-ride it and see what it feels like and um, obviously like seeing a video can be very useful but if you can physically go out and pre-ride any kind of time trial course or hill climb course that can be really helpful to you because you know you know how steep it is and how it's going to feel and you can pace it better because you you know have first-hand experience um, and whether you have pre-ridden it or you've you know just remember it from last year or you've seen a video of it i think it's really good going into an event to imagine yourself doing it and visualize that experience and anticipate how hard it's going to feel but also anticipate how well you're going to be able to cope with the discomfort of you know being at your limit for the last five minutes of the of the hill climb um, and also uh, being able to kind of pre-play in your mind what you're going to do to get ready for the race and you know what you're doing to get warmed up and line up and that way all of that stuff is largely automated and you don't have to think about it and you don't have to stress about it. I think a lot of times people kind of psych themselves out because when they're racing and they're doing a time trial or a hill climb and it's really hard, uh, they start to question whether or not they can sustain it. But if they know that from training and know from kind of anticipating that it's gonna be hard, but they're gonna be able to cope with it, uh, you can usually get you know, more out of your body by anticipating that and having the confidence that you can uh, endure that discomfort for as long as it takes to get to the finish line. Okay, Ray, so you've done this once before mm -hmm. and we just pre-wrote it again today. What advice would you have for first timers or somebody who hasn't done this uh, recently at least and they don't remember what it's like? Yeah, so my advice to someone that's gonna do it for the first time, chances are you're gonna start off as a Cat 5 racer. Uh, so there's a huge range of fitness. Uh, so when you start off, I would recommend staying in contact with the group but don't break wind for anyone else if you don't have to. Chances are everyone's gonna stay at a similar pace, but people with um, less fitness will probably start dropping off at different points in the race. So just make sure you stay at a comfortable enough pace if you feel really, really strong. I mean, you can do whatever you want, but for me, it was kind of a struggle finding out how to pace myself. Uh, there are a couple of sections where it'll flatten out a bit. So having a wheel to sit on is pretty nice around those points. I would say, conserve your energy in the front or in the first half of the race race smart don't break wind for anyone if you don't have to in the second half i mean it's just steep so it just like takes care of itself whatever your fitness is is going to determine how fast you can go yeah and just focus on your effort and not worry about other people so that's kind of my advice for during the race my advice for before the race is to make sure you get a good warm-up even after pre-riding it today and then doing an effort it seemed like we didn't get enough of a warm up. So spending quality time on the trainer, making sure you're actually warmed up will make a big difference. And yeah, I mean, the start line, they line you up basically by groups. Yeah, so just know what your start time is. Yeah, know what your start time is. Don't line up when other people have to line up, <laughs> line up when you have to. <laughs> exactly, and delay having to get off the trainer and go to the start line as much as you can. It's probably one of the only times where procrastinating might not be that bad. Um, yeah, it sucks if you warm up really well and then you're standing around for 20 minutes and you get cold before the race actually starts. I mean, I've, I've done that before. It's, it's not awesome. Uh, well, while it is a mass start race, I mean, the, 
it is a hill climb and it's a time trial so just try to do the best time that you can so. yeah and that's one nice thing about this kind of race is like i mean it doesn't matter what place you come in so much as you did you know the best effort that you can and that you know maybe you're checking in on your current fitness level or you know setting a pr and then you can try to you know build up and set a new pr next year um or you know do it in training and, and just keep getting better um i think a lot of people get too hung up on placings sometimes and you know only one person can win but everyone can keep working at you know getting better and <laughs> yeah. enjoying training and, and just like being a good athlete at whatever level they're at exactly yeah but i think that's probably going to cover it for our little pre-ride video hopefully some of that's useful to you um and i'm sure we'll do more of this stuff uh, in the future for other other events <laughs>